It's good to see you guys. Um, feel good going into this week. You know, I think way proud of the team for their effort and their focus and their energy for last week. I think so much of it is trying to get out of our own way, you know, and really reveal, um, you know, who we are and what we're all about and all of it. And, and I thought for so many guys' first game, so many guys played and um, so many guys in new roles, you know, leadership roles. And there's always the the uh, anxiety or the, um, the, the view of, like, I need to make every play. I, um, I have these accolades. I need to do this. I need to do that. And didn't, didn't see any of that. Saw young guys that stepped on the field for the first time and, and uh, felt like they belonged there. And so uh, I credit uh, the team. I credit the coaches for a lot of that. I think those are the, you know, we talk about the task within the task. And I think, you know, the first game of the year, the, you know, the task within the task, you know, what we're doing when we're really doing what we're doing is um, to tr play green. And so um, it only gets harder from here. And so what a great opportunity um, with this next game versus, B versus BYU and um, – you know, Kalani and his team are, are playing at a high level, so excited for that. I think an opportunity for us, again, to show uh, what we're about. I'll take any questions you guys got. Dave, you, you mentioned um, BYU. What specifically impresses you about them? They, they looked so good in that first game. Uh, they're a veteran group. They've got, I want to say there's eight guys back on either side of the ball, and then, you know, just their – um, a lot of experience on top of just that as well. So, you know, they've been playing for a while. Um, and there's a great physicality about them. I think their size and their physicality really stands out. And, um, you know, they, they play a, um, 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 a real physical kind of old school type of game. And it's, it's cool to see from the outside, you know, it's another thing to be lined up against it. And so we're, we're, we're definitely um, going to be challenged at the line of scrimmage. How about Jerry Hall, just kind of what he brings? Um, great play action pass thrower. Um, I think he can, he can move in the pocket and create things if things aren't there. He's going to be one of the better quarterbacks we play all year. Um, and, um, you know, it, the film's impressive in terms of uh, the decisions he makes, the, uh, the throws that he's able to complete, and really the, you know, the, the throws that he, do, that he, he doesn't take. You know, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't put the team at risk. And so, uh, you know, he, from where we he – was, he was good last year, he's better now. Dave, uh, when – Blake starts scrambling sometimes. Do you ever, like, hold your breath, you know, just uh, – and do you have to sort of balance, like, trying to rein him in or just letting him be himself because obviously he can make big plays like the touchdown run? Yeah, I think, you know, there's there's times where, I mean, we would all want him to slide. You know, we so every Tuesday we have a drill of the day and um, – Every position coach will start with that drill of the day, and here's the drill, and here's how it, um, you know, here's how it shows up in 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 the game, and I think it's important to do that. And it ties, you know, um, it ties the individual work to uh, to uh, you know, to games, and so it's not lost that it's all scheme or you know this design or this adjustment or this check that it's all much more foundational and much more um, much more created and run by players, you know, than coaches. And, and so anyways, one of the, the drill of the day, I think it was a week ago, we, for uh, the quarterbacks, it was, you know, sliding. <laughs> so we probably need another one. So we'll, we'll double it up. Yeah, you, you talked about the number of players that mm -hmm. played. Running back and receiver, did you see specific guys emerge there, or will it take maybe a couple more games? No, it was it was good to see. I think um, we, you know, I think that's ongoing. 
And so I think it's, it's, it's uh, yes and to answer your question. You know, I think, um, you know, Monterey, role, his role is bigger now. And so uh, for him to kind of uh, take hold of that right away and run with it is cool to see. I think Hal and, um, you know, that the position he's playing right now is a, uh, was a big one coming from last year. And, and for him to make his own uh, mark on it pretty early is cool to see. And then yeah, I thought Seth did a lot of good things, blocking and, and uh, a lot of little things that um, – that I, he's really worked hard on in fall camp, and to see the transformation with Seth, just way cool. And I think he's he's emerging, and so uh, it's good to see. And then, you know, to have Jalen catch that ball at the end was really neat. I think he's one that's always fighting something, some type of uh, you know um, ankle injury or knee injury, and to, to be able to get him running like that, it's good for the future. Dave, you coached a game in Provo back in 2012. What do you remember about the atmosphere at Lavelle Edwards, and why is it such a hard place to play? Well, I, they're they're great at welcoming you at the beginning of the game, and um, just a really f kind of friendly fan base. And, and then once you get in, I mean, it, it's packed and it gets loud. And you know, I think especially now that the games are later in the evening, I mean, that's a whole thing as well. Just uh, in your hotel, uh, looking at your uh, looking at the clock, you know. And so I think it, there is a home field advantage there. I mean, that's a storm that we have to run into. And we've been, we've been um, talking about that and preparing for that, and so we'll see. Dave, kind of in that same vein, the first big road test last year at Oklahoma State, you saw a lot of the newer guys blink. Mm -hmm. How do you then prepare for the hostile environment on Saturday? From the very beginning, yeah, from January all the way on. Just every obstacle that's hard, everything that's not um, – not easy, everything that's not, you know, um, that's not comfort, right, saying yes to those things. Do you think Christian Morgan will be ready to play this Saturday? Uh, I hope so. Yeah, I've not heard anything different than that. That's our expectation. For you guys to go 5-1 and one last year in ranked games, how do you prepare coming in against a really tough opponent, and is it realistic that you'll have that kind of record this year against a ranked opponent? No, I appreciate the question. We don't really look at the opponent that way, and so so much, it's all really just what we're doing. And I have to imagine that probably sounds, um, you know, um, old hat to you guys. But I think, you know, especially like so, we talked about t today about narrowing the focus, up in the quality, and increasing the speed. And I think those are the things that, that can travel and can play when, um, you know, it's third down there and you can't hear anything. And, uh, you know, they're aligned in a look that maybe we ain't seen yet. And we have to execute. It's got to be our best versus their best. And so to narrow the focus is to control and which the things that you can control. And, um, you know, I anticipate this week just the outside noise will probably get more and more more people with more opinions and i think a lot of it for a fan is it's good and um you know i appreciate all that but i think from the inside out you know those those could be looked at as distractions and so to focus on what's right ahead of us let's have the best tuesday practice the best wednesday practice so on and so forth and then to up the quality you know i think you know what are we going to call when we got to have it i have to imagine there's going to be a lot of got to have it plays or situations in this game uh, being closely contested. And so uh, let's not have a lot of fluff. Let's have the real stuff. And then the speed, you know, we had, I think we had 12 guys over 20 miles an hour. And we had 30, 30 total over 20 miles per hour in this last game. Uh, so we're playing really fast and we want to continue that. And so, you know, as we're looking at the game plan, right, does this increase our speed? Or does this d decrease our speed? How do you feel about Kyron Drone's development now that he's cemented as the number two? Really good. Yeah, I thought Kyron did a lot of good things. I thought there was a poise about him, which I'd always, you know, kind of figured it would be like that, but you never really know till you know. And, um, you know, there's a smile and a confidence about him in, uh, on the sidelines. And uh, there was good uh, vocal leadership you know, on the field with him. 
And so excited about what he can do. A couple of those throws, you know, he's slinging it. So excited about the future for him. When the news coming out that there could be 12-team playoff, what are your thoughts on expanding that? I think it's good for the sport. I think people, um, you know, there's always questions about, you know, I think once that shows up, if you look from a big perspective, I think you immediately go, like, what, what happens to bowl games? You know, do bowl games lose their importance? I think there's already kind of a, a – um, um, you could probably make that argument now that that's already happening now. And so with, with this, does, does bowl games really become an afterthought? Um, and so I, I have to imagine there's people – that are working all of that out in terms of solutions for that. But I think having the opportunity, uh, no matter where you're at, uh, to have a shot to get in and compete, I think will be way cool for the sport. And I think it's needed. Dave, will the running game need to, uh, will you need to get that more established early this time? I think so. I think, um, you know, I think there's both, there's both, um, um, you know, a, um, a full understanding of um, and full understanding and appreciation for the looks that we're going to see. And then I think it's also, you know, getting some of the uh, uh, the happy feet, maybe the um, the insecurities out of the guys that are carrying the ball. I think those two things, um, you know, I think a lot of it is you go through the first one so that you can be better for the second one. And um, we're hoping that that's the case. Dave, going into an environment like this, how much does it help to have a few assistants who have spent as much time at BYU as they did? And how much do you lean on them going into a game like this? No, I appreciate that. Yeah, so there's a lot of um, there's good um, feedback from them just you know, just on the, on the experience of playing at night and what that's like. Um, obviously, they know the, the coaches there and um, – there's 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 a good awareness of personalities and all of it, but you know um, I I've I have not worked with Kalani, but I've I'm close to Kalani. You know Kevin Clunes on that staff, close to him. Ed Lamb I worked for for I think like two months um, um, when I left Delta State and Ron Roberts. And prior to going to Hawaii, I was there with Ed at uh, Southern Utah, and so. A lot of those guys I know too, and so it's a, it's a, we're all a close group. Coach, in terms of most non-conference opponents, you kind of go in, you've seen the tape, but maybe players don't know exactly what to expect on the field. When you have this rare one where a lot of guys have seen this team before, mm -hmm. how much of a benefit is that to you? No, I appreciate that. Yeah, it works both ways. I think, um, you know, in looking at them, there there is there is a flare of uh, game plan, um, of um, of game planning on the defensive side of the ball, particularly. And so, you know, there is not there. You look at week to week, they um, you know they change some. So there 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 are some consistencies, but not as much as maybe your typical outfit. And so I think that shows up, uh, which will kind of detour the, you know, we play them last year thing. And then, I, you know, I also think, though, that um, um, offensively with, um, you know, Grimey and Eric being there and, you know, having some of the roots of it and then, you know, seeing how it's expanded in the throw game particularly, I think, um, you know, the, the changes – um, from last year to this year, I think, are are many, and they're probably growing. Dave, as you watch tape maybe from BYU's game last week, is it kind of weird for you to see Gary running around in a US, U.S. set uniform? Well, I was pulling for him. You know, I thought, you know, I, I hope for him for all the success. And uh, I know they had a tough one versus BYU, and BYU does that to a lot of people. And so... It was. I, I was definitely interested in in following it as it was, you know, going, and then um, or right after, rather, and then watching the tape for sure. Dave, you talked about Monterey Ball a lot earlier. How important is that for an inexperienced wide receiver group 
to have someone you can run plays with out of the backfield, put in the slot, put out wide, how important is his versatility? I uh, appreciate that. Yeah, I think it's 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 good. You know, I, I um, I'm um, thankful for uh, for his ability, but then also, you know, um, Dallas and Sean and, and Grimey and all that, because we're we're making what we do what he does, you know. And so I think, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot more option routes. There's a lot more screens, uh, the fly sweeps for sure. Right, Move, moving him around, try to find uh, roles for him that he can do what he does really well. I think those guys have got a great, uh, you know, Juice is right in there too. They've got a great uh, read on all that. And so I think together that's a real, it's a real cool thing to see. And then uh, I think Jordan Neighbors is kind of right in that role as a guy that's uh, uh, kind of an apprentice that's coming along too. So. Yeah, we're kind of creating a spot as it goes. Coach, in terms of the success that not only your starters had on Saturday, but also some of the guys who got in there late, did that tell you something about your depth that maybe you didn't know after weeks of practice? Or is it kind of know what you know knew a week ago or two weeks ago about that? No, I thought it was, um, it was good for the team for as many guys that played as, 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 as they did. You know, it was really the first time since I've been here that we've been able to do that. And it's been difficult because we've wanted to do that for a while. And, uh, you know, when we have a, a new guy on a kickoff, I mean, the, there would be chance going. I think we talked about this last time. And, you know, uh, Bo Chow's in there and the whole thing, the whole sideline was calling his name. And I think he got in on the last play on a tackle. And so it was, it was very cool. You don't have a bunch of those, so you try to be able to take advantage when you can. Dave, all the single-digit numbers divvied out except for one. Is mm -hmm. there a strategy behind that? No, I think you know uh, that. So those single-digit numbers, guys that uh, uh, academically are it, right, are are, are achieving. Uh, guys that character-wise are are um, living everything out the right way. Guys that you know so whether it's in the bank treating people the right way or it's out in the class or your learning specialists or just anyone that you're interacting with, um, that there is, a, you know, we talked about respect the other day. And it's like a re-inspect. It's like take the time to get to know the uh, who you're with and not just take, you know, there's not an entitlement or taking things for granted. And uh, so you want people that are, are taking the time to know um, their people, you know, and then, you know, I think the other part with that would be, you know, football, that they're a contributor. And so I think those single digits have a lot more to do with off the field than on. And so that's something that's earned right now. Dave, you talked about Gavin the other night. How cool was that? And then what are your expectations for him? Is he a guy that can be in the wide receiver rotation or is he going to mainly be used on kick returns? Yeah, so I think Gavin right now is, is kind of coming on strong. I think, you know, starting off in spring, I think all of it was – you know, um, was again new for him, and then uh, kind of getting his his legs back, and then fall camp started really strong, and uh, kind of got uh, tweaked up a little bit, and has just now this is about his second week back, and is getting stronger and stronger. So fully expect him to uh, to be in the rotation and be a strong contributor. He is already a leader of that group. Dave Zero. Running game much different with Tyler Algier gone. No, the the Cal transfer they have physical. It's kind of a you know it's here we go again. You know, and um, um, is a physical runner. Falls forward. Has got good speed. I think his vision was was strong. I think he is a uh, he's a force. You know, and um, you know. The, the, the offensive line and their cohesion and their their ability to communicate with each other they've been go going at it for a while a lot of those guys I think there's one um, there's one tackle that's that's a, uh, a transfer as well but outside of that the, that group's been working with each other for a while and so it's very clear on film uh, but their their running game is the first thing you have to stop and it's immediate when you watch the tape 
is Apu the honorary tour guide on this trip? Or? Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I think, you know, it's one of those things where Apu wears, um, you know, he's Sunday morning, he's up early watching watching film of uh, BYU. So I think, you know, um, he he will be ready to play this game. I think we're going to have to do a good job as coaches to not make it be bigger than what it needs to be. I think that's probably going to be the, the concern is for him, like we talked about earlier, to narrow the focus and uh, control what you can control. But I, you know, the, if you were talking motivation, the motivation is there for him. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. All right, thank Thanks, you guys. Dave.